Greetings to all. Welcome to Physio TV. Today we have with us Dr. Sushil Arora sir for yet another interesting topic that is recent advances in Parkinson's disease. Sir is associate professor in CMF College of Physiotherapy, Pune. Sir has total seven number of publications in this field. Also, sir has sir is pursuing. PhD from MUHS. Sir has total 15 years of experience in this field and he is a certified PNF practitioner. Welcome. We welcome you, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Tushar, for introducing me to the audience. Now, today we are going to see about the recent advances in rehabilitation of an individual with Parkinson disease. To start with, Parkinson disease, as everyone knows, is a progressive neurodegenerative disease that is characteristic by many motors and non-motor symptoms, which has wide range of impact on patients and their families. According to WHO, 6.1 million individuals have Parkinson disease globally. Some authors have also shown that the burden of Parkinson disease is going to be increasing as it has doubled in last 26 years from 1990 to 2017. The disease has increased from 2.5 to 6.1 million people have started suffering from Parkinson. So it's our responsibility to give them a proper rehabilitation. And what are the recent trends which are working in Parkinson disease? As we all know, that Parkinson is mainly characteristic by four motor symptoms, which are resting tremors, bradykinesia, rigidity, postural instability with balance and gait disorders. Moreover, because of these four cardinal symptoms, they have problems in performing personal activities of daily living, such as eating, drinking, cutting, walking, and writing. All this leads to a burden on the family and caretakers. Therefore, it is as all of us know, there is no cure for Parkinson disease. Usually patients are given only diodopa with combination sometimes with carbidopa. At least liodopa helps in three quarters of Parkinson cases by reducing their motor functions. But Physiotherapy has a significant importance in multidisciplinary team focusing on rehabilitation of patients with Parkinson. So we are the most important part of a rehabilitation team when we are rehabilitating an individual with Parkinson's disease. So the aim of our physiotherapy basically then reducing the rigidity is basically with the functional as transfers, teaching them how to have a proper transfers, how to maintain their postures, balance improvement and fall prediction, then gait, upper limb functions because they are the most important one for ADLs and most importantly is physio or physical capacity which includes cardiopulmonary endurance to carry out the daily living life and to improve their quality of life. So ultimately, we have to improve the quality of life for the patients. So the goals of physiotherapy are to maintain and improve the level of functioning and independence, which will help them to improve their quality of life, use of exer exercises and motor strategies to improve their mobility, correct and improve abnormal movement patterns and posturals whenever possible, maximizing their strength and flexibility, correcting, improving postures, balance, and minimizing the risk of fall, and maintaining good breathing pattern and effective cuffing. And most important one is educating the person with Parkinson and their caregivers and family members. because. It's the most important one. And lastly, enhancing the effect of drug therapy. So to start up with, everyone says that exercise 
is the most important key for VA or for recovery from Parkinson's. Yes, evidences have proven that it maintains a health and well-being in Parkinson's. However, it has shown to have most important or plays a bigger role in addressing in prevention of secondary complications or preventions which can be like contractures and deformities. So what happens with exercises? Basically, when we use some exercises, which are called as neuroprotective exercises, which are mental imaginary and dual task trainings, which are nowadays into focus for Parkinson disease, they actually enhance the use of motor learning principles, which we are going to see in further lecture. So the, what does evidence says for exercises? In 2018, Hash and his co-workers has done a meta-analysis and have shown that there is a positive evidence that physical exercises training increases brain reverse neurotoxic factor, BD, it is called as BDNF, which have been decreased in Parkinson patients, but with exercises, this BDF increases, results in reduction of the motor symptoms, which were measured by UDP, UDRS, and has confirmed that there is a positive effect of exercises on dopaminic pathway in Parkinson's disease. So it's a very strong evidence that exercises really helps, but what exercises to be given, we are going to see that. And there are some evidences in literatures which says that therapeutic exercises when given to an individual with Parkinson's disease were more efficient in improving both motor as well as non-motor impairments. So it's not just that the exercises are going to improve their motor functions, but they are going to improve their non-function or non-motor impairments as well. So, okay. Basically, whenever we talk about rehabilitation, we only think of motor rehabilitation. So basically motor rehabilitations, we use motor relearning practices and trainings to enhance or to increase their motor skills. Okay where in basal ganglia this function is really impaired. So let us see what other exercises we have in evidences and recently which have been found to be more effective in Parkinson patients. First of all, I'm going to talk about is a resistance training and muscle strengthening things. In a systemic review by such a way and his co-workers in 2015, concluded that there's no evidence on superiority of progressive resistive training compared to other treatments to support the use of this approach in rehabilitation process. So in 2015, it was found that resistance training had no effect on motor functions or non-motor functions in Parkinson's disease. But later on, it was found that in recent things, it was found that in 2018, a study showed that the low, that is two week per, two times per week training for 12 weeks, that is progressive resistive exercises is given for two times per week over for the period of eight or 12 weeks to a moderate, that is two to three times per week over for 10 weeks, resistive training appear to be efficient with Parkinson in early to mid to moderate Parkinson disease. But there are no evidences which says that it is very effective in later stages of Parkinson disease. So whenever you are using your resistive training, make sure that it is for a long period of time, mainly for 12 weeks to 10 weeks. That is what evidence says. Now, the another thing is what should be the set of repetitions or what should be the things. So evidence says that the number of sets may vary from two to three. That means 
two sets of progressive resistive exercises, whether you are using any of the methods like DeLong or Oxford, two sets, two, three sets during initial period of Parkinson helps them to improve the strength of Parkinson disease. Then uh, the next thing was whether 10 RM is better or 1 RM better. In a study done by Sachdeva again, have shown that 1 RM, when you calculate 1 RM of a person is better than 10 RM calculations. So always go for 1 RM protocols for patients with Parkinson diseases whenever you are using for muscle strengthening. Resistive training, yes, mainly which exercises are to be focused. They are bench press, lateral pull down, military press, seat row like 45 degrees, bar belly squats, leg curl ups, leg extension, calf raise, lower abdominal exercises. Most importantly, treadmill and bicycle interventions can be used to perform against the resistance by using one ROM and evidences have shown that these exercises help them to prevent the further worsening of a disease and development of deformities in Parkinson's. Same way, as I was saying, that is what uh, D. Silva and his co workers in 2018 proved that there is a long term effect in non motor signs and symptoms of Parkinson's, that is, especially in cognitive aspect. That means they have a lot of improvement in the cognitive with eight weeks of treadmill training and has found to be more effective in non-motor functions. I'm again repeating non-motor signs and symptoms of Parkinson's. So you can use treadmill training for your things. Same way in 2018, again, Flora and his co-workers have shown that resistive exercises were effective in reducing anxiety symptoms and improving quality of life in this population. And they have given the efficiency of all the exercises which I was talking about. So they have said that this exercises will help them to improve or to decrease their functions or to decrease their secondary complications of tightness and development or increasing the strength. So the treatment of basically the second non-motor functions or non-motor uh, things which are nowadays not being uh, focused is a tremors. So basically the treatment as far as uh, recent advances are called, they have shown that there is only medications which are used nowadays or were used before for reducing the tremors in Parkinson's. But there are evidences which have shown that electrotherapy helps to reduce the tremors in Parkinson patients. So electrotherapy also plays an important role in rehabilitation of Parkinson's. Zoom and co-workers hypothesized that cutaneous efficient EVO by surface stimulation produces an inhibitory effect on propros uh, neural, which turns could suppress the thermal signal or uh, sorry, resting tremor signals passing through the this neural system. So they said that whenever you are giving a cutaneous stimulation, whether it is any of them, okay, whether it is TENS, whether it is EMS, they helps to inhibit the effect or suppress the tremors in Parkinson patients. Evidences have also shown that electrical stimulation, basically EMS, when applied on the radial nerve areas, have reduced 
the refractory period for resting tremors. It was again done by Zhu and his co-workers who have really given this a beautiful study on electrotherapy, which has changed that tense can be used with a good results in patient with Parkinson's disease. Now coming on to another most important area, which is aerobic training. There are evidences that this aerobic training treadmill, as we have already seen that eight weeks of training of treadmills helps them to have effect on non-motor functions or non-motor impairments in Parkinson patients. So aerobic training, now what does evidences or recent advances talks about for Parkinson patients? It has been found that aerobic exercises can reduce inflammation, suppress the oxidative stresses, and stabilizes calcium uh, homostasis in brain. But it has been reported that along with this, aerobic training has reported to improve both motor and non-motor signs and symptoms in Parkinson's. So it has got a good evidences. The most common and studied aer aerobic training, which I could come across the literature was treadmill walking. With improvement in motor functions like motor actions, balance, gait, or, although the evidence are not so strong, but it has been found that it increases with free walking and nodular walking, but treadmill walking has given a good effects on motor and non-motor dominance of Parkinson. So just a free walking and nodular walking, that is total body version of walking performed can give you much better results or on balance and gait, but do not have a lot of evidences on motor actions, but with sign and symptoms, yes, non-motor functions are basically goodly improved by treadmill walking. An interval training for eight to 12 weeks, three times per week, one hour session of training with 10 minutes of warm up, 40 minutes of aerobic training and 10 minutes of cool down has shown to have a good effect on patients with Parkinson's. If, for example, if they are not very comfortable with treadmill and has shown to have a good evidences, but uh, performing an eight sets of three minutes of cycling or two minutes of treadmill training at 60 to 80 RPM, and 60 RPM for cycling has shown to have more improvement in motor functions or motor elements of Parkinson's disease. Then coming on to Tai Chi, which has been successfully used and the second largest evidences or a strong evidences which I could found in the literature was Tai Chi. Tai Chi is basically a combination of slow breathing and slow movement has proven to have a moderate evidences. And it has been found that Tai Chi not only improves the motor functions, but also improves balance and functional mobilities in patients with Parkinson's. Reducing, not only that, it also reduces the number of falls, therefore, improving or preventing their fall efficiency, but okay, but have not significantly effects on gait velocity, step length, and gait endurance improvement as far as Tai Chi is concerned. Then, most importantly, the thing is multimodular exercise program. Now, when I talk about multimodular exercise program. I have come across a 
six phase of exercise program, which was found to be very, very effective in patients with Parkinson. So I want to share that with you. The phase one was said to be where they are using coordination, muscle strengthening and balance activities. And they said that if you go with this phase wise training of a Parkinson, it was there was 80% improvement in Parkinson patients for their multimodular exercise program. So in phase one, it was found that you should give a coordination exercises to upper limb and lower limb movements. You should give resistive exercises without a weight. Okay, that means free exercises and recreational activity basically which can stimulate your vestibular system were more effective in patients. Then phase two was trunk movement could be added to upper limb and lower limb movement. Lightweight, like for example, whooping, hoofing, this type of exercises for muscle resistance, plus recreational activity which stimulate your visual and vestibular system. In phase three, trunk movements were subsided by head movements. So now we are moving on to moving not only the trunkal exercises, but at the same time, we are going to work on the neck as well because spasticity or rigidity is more in the trunk and neck muscles. So in phase three, that is how you should be progressing for your exercises. Then heavy equipments like weight, medicine balls and barbell uh, squats can be used for muscle strengthening in patients with phase three of multimodular program. Recreational activities which stimulates your visual, vestibular and somatosensory things can be used for improving your balance in Parkinson patients. In phase four, head, trunk and upper limb, lower limb movements should be combinated with this. Most importantly, PNF patterns can now be introduced into patients Along with that, you can use loading with more intensity, as I have said about before, that you should increase from low to moderate intensity of resistive exercises, where you can increase the repetitions and increase the intensity of repetition. Moreover, work with integratory approach of all three sensory systems for balance, and in phase five, four different sequences are used. Two for which the same upper limb and lower limb, that means PNF patterns, which are asymmetrical PNF patterns with alternate movements for upper limb and lower limb. Exercise can be done with weights. What we have seen before, the protocol for like, for example, uh, chest build and all other exercises. And for balance, you can now start with half turning and complete turning with visual clues. So this is a multimodular system in which the last phase. So see where your patient stands, which exercises you can give. If it is in a phase one, then start with phase one and go to phase six. Or if you are in a six one, or your patient is at four phase, start from four and then progress to six. This was a very good protocol, which was found to have improved not only coordination, muscle strength and balance together. So in coordination, you can start with four sequences of different movements, like alternate upper limb and lower limb, with or without trunkal patterns, or you can use ropes and other things here. Same exercises, but the series of repetitions were 15 repetitions can be added. That means a patient can now start with 15 added repetitions. And lastly, the recreational activities will be with tactile clues. Now, without a visual, but more with a tactile clues, the balance should be used for a tactile clues. 
Now, now the next thing which I came across was motor strategy training, which were basically, it was found that there were a lot of deficient in generating the internal behavior. That means internal strategies for balancing and the problems were more with the patients. So strategies basically were not only physical, but also attentional clues and combinations can overcome some of the problems basically with balance and gait, which can be used for Parkinson patients. For example, music-based movement therapy, which is the most promising one, but needs some more further researches because I could not find much of the evidences for this. Focus is on enjoying the movement, not on the mobility limitations. Therefore, music-based movement therapy was found to be more appealing, more in patients with Parkinson's. Then the earlier stage of diagnosis and gait emphasize is put onto education and self-management. That's the most important key to success in a rehabilitation of a Parkinson's disease. So European guidelines have, there are European guidelines for motor learning expectations. That means how these strategies can be used in form of fluent functioning and dual task training and compensatory stress by using external clues, self-instructions and attentions. So European guidelines are the most important guidelines which talks about the self-management of Parkinson's diseases. So for visual quilling, a focus is pointed to step over or initiate the gait so you can always have a strip of tape on the floor or have a foot print on the floor and then you start walking onto that. That or can reduce the freezing episodes in Parkinson's thing. Auditory clues, counting one, two, three to initiate the walking, stepping to the beat of mentor move or specific music at specific cadence can be helped to improve the rhythm of walking in patients with Parkinson's. So auditory clues also plays an important role in strategy or a movement strategy training in Parkinson's. Attention clues, yes. Thinking about a big step, that means whenever you are making a patient to walk, before they start walking, mental practice, mental imaginary techniques are to be used in Parkinson's and have, uh, now it's been growing evidences on that. So it has a moderate evidences. Thinking about taking a big step, making a wide arc turn, this is applicable in cases of correcting a bad habit, such as a person with a person who has stiff hips or have a hip hiking, they have shown to have a good evidences. Proprioceptive fluing is rocking from side to side, ready to initiate the walk, stepping, taking one step backward as a clue, ready to walk forward. So this type of fluing you can use, for example, whenever you want to. So take one step back, then take one step forward will help the patient to improve their gait as well as balance and initiation of gait with motor planning. So a systemic review of 24 studies have shown that there's a strong evidence that auditory clues increases the speed but are insufficient evidences for visual and somatosensory cooling. So auditory clues have better effect in Parkinson's to improve the internal as well as external strategies for balance and gait improvement in Parkinson's patients. And lastly, 
most one is hydrotherapy which is nowadays used in india hydrotherapy has been widely used with patient with parkinson and has been proved to have efficiently for different gait rehabilitation programs as well as to improve the balance and quality of life and reducing pain and fall of the patient so there is a strong evidences which says that hydrotherapy is proven to be very effective in improving balance and reducing the falls in parkinson patients moreover warm property of the water that means if you are using a hot water tank for hydrotherapy can also reduce rigidity to some extent so it has been there are evidences which are saying that the hot water hydrotherapy can help in reducing rigidity a pilot study done by rosazon determined that the effect of aqua base physiotherapy exercise program on gait parameters and with parkinson has shown that there was much improvement in speed velocity and gait parameters in parkinson patient increasing the step length and reducing their cadence nowadays most of people are using virtual reality interactive techniques so what does evidence says visual reality optimizes the motor learning in safe environment by replicating the real life scenarios so it could be help to improve functional activities of daily living in patients with parkinsons so geo john and his co workers in 2000 develop a virtual fluing that could present in an interactive visual reality environment and has proven to improve the motor functions and adls in parkinson patients as i was saying mental imaginary yes there are strong evidences that mental imaginary which is a cognitive process of creating a visual auditory or kinesthetic experience in mind with or without physio physical execution of the movement have shown to be an important technique in motor learning and control or to improve motor learning planning and control in patients with parkinsons and i could also find an evidence for whole body vibration which were shown to have good improvement in mobility balance gait in patients with parkinson disease the effect of whole vibration was on tremors was less prominent but it was not appear to lead okay but the reduce the feeling of fatigue which was when it was compared with treadmill training it was found that treadmill training was more fatigueable than whole body vibration therapy so lastly i want to say that when to use which technique so we have seen that there are exercises which are there for prevention okay focusing on endurance training flexibility balance and functional they were rationally for neuroprotective exercises they were rationally for motor learning motor relearning and they were rationally for should we have a cluing or dual task training or should we have external clues and attention clues so when to apply as we know that the disease is stage into four stages so whenever the patient is in stage 1 to 4 you can always give secondary prevention okay secondary prevention exercises because basically focusing on strength endurance flexibility and balance in stage 1 you should always focused on building up the endurance of the muscles 
and neuroprotective exercises and for stage 2 and 3 more focus should be on motor learning principles that means repetitions positive feedback action mental imaginary dual tasks all these activities with pnf should be used in stage 2 and stage 3 along with that motor learning that is cluing for functional and balance improvement should be done in stage 2 and 3 whereas compensatory mechanisms should always be started in stage 2 for some patients but they should always be started in stage 3 and 4 where the balance is more impaired so this is how the evidences or these are the evidences which can be used for parkinson patients take home message for everyone Physiotherapy has increased its participation in Parkinson's disease treatment. However, research is still lacking in whether it is really efficient or still not because there are evidences for some things which are strongly evidences. So recently, we still need to do a lot of research in Parkinson patients. For any query, you can contact me the details are on your screen screen i'm thankful for college sancheti college of physiotherapy for giving me this opportunity to share my knowledge with all the people who are listening to today's lecture thank you everyone hope you have understood the recent advances in rehabilitation of Parkinson. Back to you, Tusha. Thank you, sir. Sir, this was indeed a very informative session as we can use this uh, in daily clinical practices to improve and to rehabilitate the Parkinson disease patients who are suffering from Parkinson's. And as you said, yet there is more evidence. We need more evidence for uh, rehabilitation, good rehabilitation. So uh, now we have come to the end of this session. So I would like to give a vote of thanks. Firstly, I would like to thank our chairman, Dr. Parag Sanjeti sir, our executive director, Manisha Sangvi ma'am, our beloved principal, Dr. Apurva Shimpi sir, and technical support for conducting this session and to our viewers for listening this session. Thank you so much.